So that explains the reason why some people feel more of a powerful effect. It's because of that liver enzyme converting it into a more powerful okay. cannabinoid, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> back to the slow burn welcome to episode four pre-rolls versus weed gummies which hits harder and lasts longer we are joined again by the wonderful dr solnik yeah i may have said solnik in the last one it's solnik (laughs) okay get together um how are you doing today i'm doing really good how are you i'm doing good i had so much fun talking with you last time i know Uh, me too i'm really excited i love the jacket again thank you i appreciate it i decided to button up this time oh i like that very austere (laughs) no this is one and only one of a kind well, consider it. Uh, <laughs> you might have one buyer. All right. So let's get into it. Um, what are the biggest differences between smoking cannabis and consuming edibles in terms of how it affects the body? The body. Okay. Yeah. So I feel like when you're smoking cannabis, right, mm-hmm. we're talking about combusting the flower because yes. you like hit it with right. like some kind of lighter. Yeah. Psh, kind of <laughs> crackles and pops. And that combustion is... Whenever you smoke something, it does affect your pulmonary and cardiac <gasps> system. Maybe I shouldn't do that. So <laughs> it's not ideal, right? It, yeah. Smoking over time, there is plenty of evidence that it does like weaken your blood vessels, weaken circulation. So it's not ideal. However, mm-hmm. they are studying currently the comparison between combusting, so smoking, and vaping. So okay. if you had to choose one, I think vaping would be a little bit better, even though it's still going into your lungs right. and stuff. Right, still inhalation. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Still inhalation, but not as detrimental harsh. over time. Yeah, harsh, exactly. Gotcha. And I'm sure like if you've smoked a joint before, you've probably coughed up a bunch. Oh, doesn't feel good sometimes, right? No. So, um <laughs> Well... It can feel good after. It can feel good after you cough, right? Hi guys. I think they say what uh, was it in Pineapple Express where they were like, oh yeah, I cough, it makes you higher. Ah! I don't know if that's a thing, but is, is it not a I thing? don't know if it's that's a thing hilarious. or not. Or people You're just coughing it. before you hit the joint. You might just feel higher because of the lack of oxygen. Oh my gosh, yeah, <laughs> oh, that makes but, sense. But I don't know. Um, You're like, that part's not from the weed, hun. <laughs> yeah, just like hold your breath maybe longer. That's so but, funny. But um, for eating, I do think it's less harmful on the body overall Mm -hmm. you have all your digestive enzymes it's more acidic in your stomach so it's a little bit kinder as far as like if there's anything in the product itself if we're not getting a clean product unlike ours which is very clean and tested already here folks but um yeah those digestive enzymes and the acidity in your stomach does protect you a lot more gotcha yeah so if you want to do the healthiest option Mm -hmm. it would be to take an edible probably yeah and then um i have heard too that smoking weed is less harmful harmful than cigarettes though is that true or than tobacco yeah and I think that's mainly because of the carcinogens that are in tobacco I mean if you I actually had a friend one time in California shout out you know who you are um they did they were analytical chemists so they did all of like the testing right yeah and they ran a little test under the radar comparing uh American spirit tobacco, Mm -hmm. the one that's like all natural, right? And compared it to weed. And the amount of pesticides that are in American spirits is sort of alarming. Damn. Honestly, cannabis and even even though we're not really regulated to do so at modern herb code we test everything Mm -hmm. to um kind of mirror the compliance in cannabis yeah we are the most tested and standardized agricultural crop compared to probably most of the things that are in a grocery store wow everything has to be tested everything has to have a coa so i feel like for as far as tobacco versus cannabis yeah you're get you're definitely getting something that has less pesticides yeah. and heavy metals in it and when you were saying um about testing and you try to mirror were you, were you saying you try to mirror the same testing that they test tobacco that they, they test, test cannabis, cannabis. Okay. yeah because i don't I'm not an expert in, in tobacco, but they don't, they're not regulated gotcha. like cannabis gotcha. is. Cannabis has the most strict regulations around it compared to any other kind of crop. Gotcha. Yeah. So the the actual product isn't as harmful as the like the process of smoking, but still it's mm-hmm. something you guys are like, 
it, if moderation is fine, but maybe try and split it up sometime. Yeah, definitely. Just like in the last episode, sometimes switch it up between just like THC and then maybe throw in some CBD if you exactly. want good sleep. Same with the way how yeah, you're smoking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Struggling with sleep support? You're not alone. That's why here at the Hem Collect, we made knockout gummies. I even formulated them myself with full spectrum cannabinoids, including live resin. Get yours at thehemcollect.com. So that's how like it affects the body in terms of health. How does it affect the body in terms of like how you're feeling between like um, an inhalation and then between like a pre-roll and then a gummy? Yeah, I feel like we kind of talked about this a little bit off camera, right? Like where you personally, right, you were saying that you smoke a joint and you feel really, really sleepy compared to when you maybe do an edible or something. Mm -hmm. I know personally when I, and this is just me, so it's just my own experience, but I know when I smoke a joint, I do get sleepy, Mm -hmm. right? Like throughout the day, I feel a little bit more sedated. Um, But for some reason, and I I really don't know the science between why, but it's it's a good question to ask. um, When I vape extracts I I don't feel that same way I feel more stimulated and I don't feel as drowsy Mm -hmm. so I'm not really sure as to what is going on there but it's definitely worth kind of studying more yeah yeah but still we do know based on our last conversation too with how it affects sleep is that if you smoke an inhalation it's going to be like sharper faster exactly it's going to feel more intense and it's going to be a shorter duration and then if you eat something it's going to be less intense and then a longer duration exactly how it's supposed to be okay moving on nailed it (laughs) Um, I almost read one of the old questions. That's not happening. Um, Why do some edibles then feel way stronger than smoking the same amount of THC? Yeah, I'm actually really excited to talk about this because I don't know if you've experienced this, but it's something that I definitely experience. Yeah. Um, I really actually personally don't take edibles frequently, and Mm -hmm. it's because I get such an effect from them, such a powerful, strong effect from them. and. I, when I looked into this, I actually found some interesting studies about it. So when you take any kind of drug, your liver has to process it. It goes Mm -hmm. through this entire metabolism pathway. Thank you, liver. Thank you, liver. Love you. Love you. (laughs) Even though maybe I don't act like it sometimes. (laughs) She's Um, (laughs) But there is an enzyme in our liver called CYP209. CYP209. 209. 209. And it is a liver enzyme is the in the phase one metabolism pathway that actually breaks down delta THC. It then converts the delta THC to a compound called 11 hydroxyl THC. Wow. And that is actually way more potent than just regular THC. Okay. And so the process of how it breaks it down makes it stronger. Yes. And you only have that process, right? You only go through phase one metabolism in your liver when you ingest it. It completely bypasses it when you inhale it. Right. So that explains the reason why some people feel more of a powerful effect. It's because gotcha. of that liver enzyme converting it into a more powerful okay. cannabinoid, essentially. Yeah. So if you are, because I was thinking how it made sense to me is I'm just like, you can like eat more in one setting then you can like smoke right or is that not true that is a good point too you like, know I was just thinking it'd be easier to like eat a lot more than if I'm like smoking at a- <laughs> totally <laughs> <laughs> totally. And we have really delicious gummies. Yes. So that is also very we'll intriguing <laughs> as well. So it makes it so easy. It's more convenient. Right. Um, but for people like myself, like I know not to eat more. Right. Like I'll smoke more just because I know I have more tolerance for it. Right. Mm-hmm. So and does that happen to everybody then? The thing with the liver, the smart stuff you said? It does. Yes, okay. it does. Everyone has that enzyme in their body. Okay. But people have different genetic variants as to how much that enzyme works gotcha Mm -hmm. but it's still gonna happen so typically would you recommend then like to um have a lower dose then with a gummy opposed like if you smoke a certain amount and then you're transitioning to a gummy maybe like smart start small yeah start small especially if you're unexperienced right and you're not sure like I wouldn't go all the way but you could if you wanted to (laughs) um I normally eat if I'm going to eat an edible it's around five millimeters 
milligrams. Oh, yeah. Same. That's as much as I can handle. Okay, thank God. <laughs> I was like, I'm a wuss. No, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're cool. You got it. It's exactly it. So some people have different genetic variations for this liver enzyme. Some people, um, they everyone pretty much ha- has it, but there's normal to poor metabolizers. So if you have lower amounts of this enzyme, you're going to have increased amount of effects, gotcha. right? Mm-hmm. So when people are like, you're a lightweight, you're like, no, my liver rules. And it just <laughs> metabolizes this really fast yeah. and efficiently. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Both are good options. They're different. The body's amazing. Yeah. Dynamic. I know for me personally, I most likely have lower amount of the CP to CP mm-hmm. because I feel it for so much longer and so much more intensely. Right. So because I don't have much of the enzymes breaking it down, I'm experiencing that cannabinoid for a longer duration of okay. time. So what I said actually was the reverse. I did it wrong. But yeah, but you were okay. right. Before, you were right at the first. That point. was a sweet yeah. way to like be like, actually, this is how it is without telling me I was fully wrong. But <laughs> I heard it, and I appreciate it. We're all learning. Um, okay, great. So does the strain matter as much in edibles as it does in pre rolls? Yeah, I really think this is subjective. I believe for myself that it does because Mm. the strain in the pre-roll versus in the edible, um, you're going to have a concentrated extract of that strain, right, Mm -hmm. in an edible because you have to have like an oil in the edible to make it infused. So I think it's even more important, right, because you're having a more concentrated effect of that strain. Right. And it's if you have a favorite strain, then why wouldn't you want – a concentrated version of that strain in your edible. I, so I, I, I don't think that there's any really clear data around this, but I do think it's more like a personal subjective right. experience. But I think so um, because of the concentration levels. Right. Mm-hmm. But it's not necessarily like a major difference. Like if you, you if you do this one, you're going to feel this effect guaranteed, but you can kind of figure it out in your body. And like if you like a certain strain, it's like, well, then you should probably have that as an edible. Yeah. And just or play around. Yeah. And I feel like there's people, you know, we kind of talked about this a little bit off camera too, where it's like, so um, collectively, I think there's people, um, and myself included, who when you take in a sativa, you feel more uplifted. Mm-hmm. With the indica, you feel more sedative, more like couch potato. And I think when we put live resin um, in all of our gummies, whether mm-hmm. it's an indica or a sativa, um, we like to differentiate to give people that option, you right. know, to decide for themselves. What right. They want. Yeah. And is that like at this point proven? If not, but you're like, well, we think it matters and some people can tell. So we're going to just give that option. Yeah, exactly. Because even if it's a collective experience, it's still evidence, you yeah. know, it's just not researched yet, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> But it is safe. Yeah, it's very And safe. delicious. Exactly, yeah. Well, I think we're wrapping up. Is there anything you want to say um, before we end this about the difference between what hits harder or lasts longer between, like, pre-rolls and gummies? I'm curious. When was about your last edible experience? Do you like edibles? Do you like pre-rolls? Well, once I, I liked having edibles um, because I could, like, dose it properly and I could, like, just yeah. stick to five. Totally. Because, um... I, yeah, experienced it very intensely and I can like, yeah, and um, it's good for me to just like, be like, great. That's, I know how much that is because totally. I'm like smoking. I'm like, that wasn't enough. And then suddenly I'm like, Boom. yeah, you know? yeah. So, you actually know the dose of what yeah, you're taking. With I like that. That's good for me. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you all so much. Again, this was episode four pre-rolls versus weed gummies which hits harder and lasts longer thanks again for tuning into the slow burn see you next week